The Culture and Animals Foundation. Think, create, explore, celebrate. Obviously, your State of the Union series is very extensive. So I wanted to ask um, why you decided as an artist to take on such a monumental task and how long this whole project took you. I didn't really plan on it from the start. I was inspired to do the first painting, which was Florida State of the Union, because I'd been learning about several things that were going on in the state that were very troubling with animals. Um, and I just was struck by the contrast to this sunny, fun kind of image of this vacation land spot. Some of the themes I've used before in my artwork, like using the bubble as a metaphor for these different realities floating by in time, but unaware of each other, seemingly disconnected. And I also used the postcard kind of kitschy name of the state as a way to kind of underline that vacation land nostalgic feeling. I'm interested in the contrasts that we experience in life. This just became a way to do it. After I finished Florida, I applied for a residency in uh, Colorado. So I did four more states when I was at Adams State. And at that point, I came back and I approached New Bedford Art Museum, just wanted to show the director at the time what I had been up to. And she said, would you like to have a show? We scheduled it for three years, and that gave me enough time to finish all of the rest of the states. Some of them took longer than others because there's a lot of different aspects to it, part of it being just the research, Googling and finding everything I could about that state, things to do, famous people from there, or what goes on behind the scenes, which is a little trickier to find the information because that state obviously doesn't really want to promote those aspects of what they're up to, unless, of course, it goes under the entertainment category like rodeos or horse carriages or circuses. They might not be hiding that. They might be promoting that. Were you always interested in painting animals um, from the beginning of your career, or did you sort of transition? I did transition. Pretty quickly, I realized I was kind of bored painting landscapes, so I started bringing pictures of animals and putting them into the paintings, and they never left. But um, during this process, I was starting to learn something about what was going on behind the scenes with animals. Uh, it didn't feel like I could personally make a change. I had a turning point, really, where I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and there was a Byzantium exhibition with all the saints that had sacrificed their lives to God. And I started thinking about all the animals who had sacrificed their lives to a higher power, but obviously, in their case, not their choice. I did this painting, this five-foot screen with animals with vestments, you know, with halos and just uh, looking like the Byzantium exhibition except for they have the vestments of the corporations or circuses or universities that they had sacrificed their lives to. I had that idea and I didn't want to do it because I was thinking, what am I going to do with that? I didn't certainly didn't consider myself an animal rights person at that point in my life, and I'm, but it wouldn't go away. It just kept nagging at me for quite a while. So I eventually did the painting. In the process of doing the painting, I learned even more about what goes on doing research for the animals and looking for images. And so that was a real turning point. And I continued to paint animals, but started to integrate some of these themes. The style of each painting mimics a postcard, as you said. Why did you choose this particular aesthetic? I felt that that kind of lends itself to this nostalgic feeling. And I think it plays in a lot to people's inability to make changes in their life that might be towards veganism or towards supporting animals. There's just always this nostalgic feeling. It just seemed... Without consciously thinking of it, it just became a way that I could address that, lure people in with this rather nostalgic and kitschy kind of fun way, and contradicting that with these bubbles with a more difficult information about things behind the scenes. Which state do you think best captures the contradictions in the paintings between the postcard aesthetic and the cruel treatment of animals? I wish I could say there was just one or two that, that really contrasted, but maybe some states we have a more idealized view of 
maybe Hawaii would be one where you would really think it's just so beautiful, such vacation land and everything. So then to have the information about what goes on with certain industries behind the scene, including factory farms, uh, just things you don't associate. What do you hope people will think or feel when they see your painting? Well, like with all my work, I like to speak for those that can't speak for themselves. So I like to use enticing colors and composition and subject matter to have people, you know, take a look, like, what am I looking at? And then to be confronted with some different types of things they weren't maybe expecting. Perhaps their defenses are down. Perhaps that information seeps in where it might not have in another form. I feel that the arts are a powerful way to have ideas and concepts seep into the subconscious. So ultimately, my hope is that people will, you know, question their way of thinking if they have resistance or if they have denial or if they have um, obstacles to seeing certain things that may will open their eyes and take a look and hopefully make some choices that are supportive of animals um, in the future. I'm from Florida, and when I saw your your Florida painting. If you just glance at it, it just seems like a very brightly colored painting. As you were talking about, the nostalgia is definitely present. But in the bubbles, you included so much information with like the alligators. And as a, as a kid, um, my school would always take me to those shows. Um, and it, it got to a point where it became sort of normalized. Like no yeah. one really realized what was so incorrect and insensitive about it but now I'm glad that people are becoming more aware yeah exactly I mean I I grew up the same way in Connecticut just you know you I was brought to the circus I you know I didn't really like it Florida being the first one I was just uh, struck by some information I had been getting from various animal rights groups I just touch on it but there's a Larson's dairy where there's abuses there but the dairy industry is abusive anyway i mean it's just abusive to begin with and then when you have a system set up that's so abusive the people that work there are caught up in a system and the abuse ends up escalating the misery that everybody's in and nobody wants to be in that position of taking babies from their mothers on day one or two as you were saying about the dairy industry and how so many of these fields are, are widespread across the nation and even internationally. Did you find that there were a lot of repeats regarding animal abuse when you were researching for the respective states? Yeah, there's a, a lot of repetition. A lot, a lot of the more Western states, although not exclusively, have rodeos. The CAFOs, the intensive farming places, are throughout the country, some places more than others. I would use the uh, irony of a state having the state animal be a bear, for instance, and bear hunting is huge in that state. Can I ask about your process? I would paint out the background just to get some color on the canvas. As I said, I did a lot of research. I was building folders for every state. I generally put in the, the background, the landscape at that point, and then I'd start doing the bubbles. And I added my cat Nelly into all the paintings, too, as sort of a through line to have to represent the companion animal. Nelly uh, is sometimes reacting to the state animal who would be hanging around. That's really nice. Are individual paintings for sale, or do you want the collection to stay together? Yeah, they're not for sale. Um, I, I want to keep them together. I, I hope to travel the show. I want to find other museums, small museums or um, university galleries that might be interested as more of a informational type of show rather than a commercial venture. I do have at this point, I have some prints made of some of the states. Some of those are available at the museum, for instance, um, will be on my website. If someone wants to buy the entire exhibition, that would be okay with me. But I uh, only with the hopes that it would be able to travel about.
am still and continue to be interested in this idea of placing animals in unusual settings to try and bring attention to them, to see life through the animal's eyes as it's reacting to these unusual situations. So a recent painting I just did, um, actually, you kind of see it there, is a a sheep that's balancing on a ball in the middle of this dark water. And there's a truck in the distance, you know, just zooming off oblivious to it. And you just look at it like, why is that sheep there? And it's kind of fun, but then it's like, maybe it's ominous. And, you know, so I, I like bringing up these questions and have people think about their typical reaction to animals. The Culture and Animals Foundation. Think, create, explore, celebrate.